Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, I'm going to talk about the amazing things that happened all last week. As you can tell, my voice is kind of dead. I did a lot of shouting, and I mean an extremely unusual amount of shouting for me. Usually I just speak at normal level. Well, the last few days, particularly on Sunday, I've had to do a lot of talking, and on Sunday in particular, I had to do a lot of shouting, and it was all worth it, and it was absolutely amazing. So what am I talking about? I am talking about a particular conference that Christians around the world were invited to attend, where we got the chance to collaborate, make content with lots of different creators. Not only that, but we also got a chance to give particular talks online about how to give Christian polemics against other ideologies, but with a particular focus on Islam. We always hear about how important it is to know apologetics, but often we don't talk about the other side of the coin, that is, polemics. This conference was dedicated to giving Christian evangelists the tools they need to attack Islam as well as defend it. Now, as of yet, or at least as of the time that I'm recording, there isn't any online videos you can find, or at least of me anyway, or at least that I've bothered to search for, where you can see people give speeches. I was honored in that I was invited to be one of the guest speakers of the conference. I got to talk about my perspective at Speaker's Corner, as well as the things that I've been studying regarding the historical origins of Islam and the perfect preservation of the Quran. Spoiler, it is not perfectly preserved at all, which I'm guessing comes to no surprise to anyone at this point, but if you're new to the channel, ooh, I touched my mic and that may have just broken everything. Okay. If you're new to the channel, I do not believe that the Quran has been perfectly preserved. I think that's a lie and Muslims, you should know this. Watch my other videos if you're interested. So at some point there's videos of me giving these guest talks will be online and you guys can watch them and enjoy them. I'll probably also mirror them on my channel as well. The conference was very well attended. We had some amazing people from around the world. Dr. J. Smith from Fander Films, God Logic, David Wood, Anthony Rogers, Daniel Apologetics, as well as all the normal people that you'd expect to see who give evangelism in London, in the UK, at Speaker's Corner every week. So you had Bob, Thomas Apologia, Sig, Ananda, pretty much everyone who you could imagine was there. And also, if I've forgotten anyone, I am deeply sorry. I'm just listing names at the top of my head. I'm pretty sure I've probably forgot some people, but my apologies, you know who you are. Everyone there was amazing. So you can expect to see that content come some point in the next few days or over the next week or something. We also made some, I guess you could kind of say like comedy content. I've just put up a trailer. I will link to it here or here, somewhere. Somewhere there'll be a link to it where I just have some clips of all the different people we interviewed in the style of Towards Eternity, that well-known Muslim channel. You know where there's like two, two Muslim guys who are Russian for some reason, like to interview Muslims and give them really hard questions? Yeah, well, we basically parodied that and we have our own version, but instead of boring Ali Dawa and Muhammad Ijab, we have all the greatest Christian apologists ever. And I'm not just saying that because I'm one of them who was, who was recorded, but we genuinely did. So like David Wood, Anthony Rogers, all the big guys, God Logic, everyone. That'll be coming out soon, whether on my channel or others. Keep a lookout for it. We basically just have so much content, we have to edit, this stuff takes time. But it was amazing. And then finally, after the conference was done, we all went to Speaker's Corner on Sunday. And I'm sure you guys have probably seen the videos by now. We managed to have, probably for the first time, I mean, I'm sure it's not the first time, but the first time in a long time, more Christians there than anyone else, than any any other group, including Muslims. It was the first time I actually saw a kind of apathy and a reluctance to do anything by the Muslims there. Like all the Muslims, they were just sort of sitting around, even the cameramen were just sort of sitting around like, okay, well, we don't want to engage with these people, like David Wood, when they realized David Wood was there, God Logic, Anthony Rogers, they didn't, or Vokab Malone, Vokab Malone was there as well. They didn't really know what to do, so they just sort of pretended they weren't there, which, great. I mean, that's one way of doing it, I guess. But what it allowed for us to do is to have very engaged crowds. There was chanting. There were declarations that Christ is king. It also happened to coincide with a protest that was organized the week before, because the week before, a Christian was almost set on fire at Speaker's Corner, and a Bible was torn up. So there was a response to that. But all this meant a total different change in energy, and it was beautiful to see. I really wish that we would just keep seeing that every Sunday because it would be an absolute joy. Rather than seeing two Muslims, two or three Muslims for every one Christian, it was flipped. It was three Christians for every one Muslim. So there was no way 
they could crowd and, and swamp and prey on people anymore. They instead had to deal with the opposite effect. They had to deal with the fact that there was they were completely outnumbered. They couldn't really do the typical Dao tricks. As always, there was some violence. The only one I saw, and this is as far as I'm aware, there was only one case of violence. There was a guy who wasn't happy that there were so many Christians chanting Christ is King, because, you know, gosh, having to deal with chanting, I wonder where we get that. I wonder, I wonder where we see that every week on Sunday at Speaker's Corner. But he didn't like it, so he decided to take his belt off and decided to whip people. He decided in particular, I think, to whip Sig. The, uh, the black guy. Yes, they did try to whip him. And no, I don't think they were thinking about how that's going to look in terms of optics afterwards. But anyway, they were quickly removed by the police, so that was sorted very quickly. I got a chance to be on the ladder with Jay Smith, and it's the first time I was ever on a ladder. I had to meet the same level of energy as Dr. Jay Smith, and I tried, I tried so much. I, I was able to do a good good amount of volume for a long time, but eventually my voice my voice was dying. I truly tore my my voice to shreds. To shreds, you say? During speaker's corner on Sunday, but it was worth it. I was showing Muslims the uh, actually you know what, you know what's brilliant Just a little thing here. There was a Christian sister who came up to me and she said, "Chris, there's a guy who's telling me about the Qur'an and he says that all dialects." And she brought me to this guy, this this Muslim dai. It was beautiful. It was it was so 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 beautiful. Everything about it. He was obviously telling fibbies, and she knew he was because she was also at the conference. So she had heard these kind of talks that I had given about the different Qur'an and the different Aruf. And yes, that is one of the talks I did. And they and she obviously thought, "Hey, I know this is terrible." But I'm just going to quickly grab Chris and let him explain it. As soon as he saw me, he said, I don't want to speak to you. I do not want to have anything to do with you. And I thought, hang on a second. You're telling someone about the killer art who doesn't know about it. And she admits, I don't know enough about it. But then when someone who does know stuff about it, who's looked into it, who has resources they can share with you about it, you don't want to hear that person. That tells me they were never sincere. Never sincere. And it was hilarious. I, I showed him different Arabic and he refused to comment on the different Arabic and pretended that all of a sudden he couldn't read Arabic. He could read Arabic when it was convenient and he was asking me, do you know Arabic? But as soon as I asked him to read the Arabic, uh, then it became a little bit of a problem. It turned out he actually wasn't really that good at reading Arabic, really. Especially when there are different Arabic sentences from the same Quranic verse that contradict each other. Then all of a sudden, he's very bad at Arabic. But either way, Siraj came, the tiny criminal, and his favourite hobby is being escorted from Speaker's Corner for being overly aggressive. But on this occasion, his other hobby was trying to troll Christians and to disrupt evangelism. So he wanted to disrupt me, and I thought, okay, you know what, I'm going to take this. But I'm not going to pivot from one question, that is, why does the killer art have different meanings, and why do they contradict? So I brought it up, I showed it on my phone, and I showed everyone around, and the whole Muslim audience was quiet. They couldn't figure out an explanation. There was another Muslim dai called Yemeni who was trying to explain to Siraj that the example he was giving that the Aruf are literally the Kira'at art, and that the Kira'at are nothing more than dialects, was factually wrong from a basic Islamic point. But Siraj is quite prideful and didn't really want to hear it. So he just talked about the Bible, you know, the classic Tukokwe, what aboutism that Islam fundamentally is. And after asking him what the Aruf are and him not being able to give an answer, I left that and thought, that's beautiful as it is. And I went round to to many Dais because I wanted them to understand something. I wanted them to understand that the Christian YouTuber who does polemics against Islam, the largest, most well-known, most well-sourced, most well-referenced person who that is, is here at Speaker's Corner today. You can humiliate him with your superior religion that you believe is better and you can demonstrate it through argument. That's why you're here. That's why you do Dawa at Speaker's Corner, that place of debate, for hundreds of years, here's your big moment, here's your opportunity. Not a single one of them wanted to go anywhere near him. They stayed the hell away. At one point, I saw Mansell walk past David Wood, and he looked at the crowd, because there were crowds by David Wood, who would have guessed? And, you know, he's, he's quite small, but he got on his tiptoes and he saw him, and then he carried on walking. He didn't want anything to do with that. Mansour actually debated God Logic, but here's the interesting thing. If you watch the debate and pay attention to the beginning part, it's on God Logic's channel, by the way, you should check it out. It's got over 100,000 views already. Mansour asks some questions that imply that he didn't really know who Avery is, who God Logic is. He was. He said things like, is this your first time at Speaker's Corner? Now that's an interesting question. Why did, because they've already agreed to debate, right? So why is he asking him, is this your first time here at Speaker's Corner? It's almost as if he wants to make sure that he doesn't have prior experience of debating at Speaker's Corner. 
And of course, Avery answered truthfully. He said, no, I've never been a Speaker's Corner before, because he hadn't. So I think that Mansoor foolishly thought that this man was just a newcomer to Speaker's Corner, when in reality, he's one of the best debaters on YouTube, particularly against Islam. And Avery demolished him. It's it was brilliant. Really watch that video. I can't big it up enough. It was truly amazing. David Wood wore his famous, oh, I'll say famous, it's now famous, I guess, shirt with the Quran verses written on it, which was amazing. Siraj tried to troll David, which is kind of the only thing they have, but it didn't really work because it just gave David more of a platform to just explain his thoughts on Muhammad. So really, Siraj is just giving David a bigger platform, which was brilliant. So thank you for that, Siraj. And overall, the day was just amazing. We all had fellowship and communion afterwards. It was it was just beautiful. There wasn't a single part of it that I don't think couldn't have gone any better. There were some amazing um, people at the conference as well, just to mention. Some really intelligent speakers. We had some of the world leading specialists at the conference who gave talks about Islamic origins and crown preservation, etc. It blew my mind. I still need to read and I have a ton of more things to read. Thanks to, in particular, to a certain person who's been a long-time supporter of me. You know who you are. Thank you for all the books. But other than that, I thought I'd just give my opinions. Hopefully this has been fairly brief. I wonder how long this will take to edit. But it was truly amazing. And thank you very much, Dr. J. Smith, for organizing that event and for inviting me as a guest speaker. It means a ton to me, and I'm sure it meant a ton to everyone else. It was edifying for not just us, but for everyone who attended. God bless you all. If you're not a Christian yet, then today's the day to become a Christian. If you have any questions about Christianity, send me an email at chris at speakerscorner at gmail.com. Yes, I know it's a funny email. And God bless you all, and take care, and have a great day. God bless.